Hello, my name is Keith Thompson. I'm president of the Nashville Civitan Club this year. I'd like to invite each and every one of you to join us for the upcoming television series, Spirit of Civitan TV. It's going to be on URTV and we're going to be covering some of the important issues affecting our community. We're going to be meeting some of the civic leaders who are making a difference every day in the lives of our community, and making things better for our children and grandchildren, making this a better place in which to live. So we hope you will be able to join us and watch our series as it comes forward. Thank you. its flavor in cooking. To start our program off today is going to be Charlie Glazner. Charlie will, is Director of Communication for Asheville City Schools, and he does all kinds of fantastic things, from creating the publications which Asheville City Schools puts out, to doing PowerPoint programs, and to representing Asheville City Schools in the community whenever somebody needs to find out more about information on Asheville City, including the superintendent and the Board of Education. He does a fantastic job of it. He's He's going to share with us today a little bit some of his PowerPoint stuff, and Mike is going to aid him in the program. So without any further ado, here's Charlie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. McCallum. I didn't realize I could have bought tickets. I would have done so and tried to win. It's a pleasure to be here again. I say again because we've come here often. And Keith's already reminded you all about how much you do for education. And we just thank you for that. I'm not going to say any more about that now, but it's good to be back. Uh, Let me just tell you briefly that I'm an Asheville native, and I'm also a graduate of Inca High School, uh, Larry McCallum. But I'll tell you what, folks, I have fallen in love with Asheville City Schools over the last five and a half years. And one of the reasons is I've been working, I had the pleasure to work for one of the premier superintendents in America, Robert Logan, and we're going to show you a little bit about what his impact has been over these five years. We like to say that Asheville City Schools is small and family friendly and safe and we have academic excellence. Those are the types. I think you know, and I won't go over this whole thing, but we have five elementary schools. We have a wonderful preschool that was featured in the paper a couple of days ago. We have two programs listed there and I'll talk about FX here just in a moment. We have an alternative school over on Monfred Avenue. We have a wonderful middle school that sometimes gets a bad rap, but it is an excellent school. Mr. Logan would tell you that. His daughter has been there this past year. And of course we have Asheville High School, one of the premier high schools in the state. Next slide. You may not be aware, but at one time, if you look up in the middle of this graph, this is, goes way back to about 1939, we had 10,000 students in Asheville City Schools. The year that it started dropping was about 1968 or 9 or 70, and so those of you who have been around since then will remember that that's when integration occurred in Asheville. So that would be another presentation to talk about that decline. But I'm proud to announce that over the last two or three years, that decline trend has leveled off, and we're sitting right at, as I mentioned a moment ago, about 3,800 students in Asheville City Schools, and we like being small. Next slide. This is a breakdown of our ethnicity. We have a very diverse school system. We're probably, in fact, I know we are, Mr. Logan, the most diverse system in Western North Carolina. <clears throat> and again, we are also diverse in the fact of socioeconomics, uh, and this number has stayed about the same over the five and a half years that I've been here. About half of our student population on any given day receives free or re reduced lunch. And if you were to see a graph about performance, academic performance, it is a straight line. The schools who have very few students on free and reduced lunch perform very well. And this is statewide, nationwide, or whatever. Those who have a high population uh, perform at a lower level. Uh, we're proud that Hall Fletcher, for example, two years ago, about in the middle of Mr. Logan's, I start to say rain, but his superintendency, Hall Fletcher had about 85% free and reduced lunch, and they performed above 90% proficient, so it was a great story. The next slide will show you uh, the fact that we have a large special needs population because of the great medical community here. We serve almost 500 students in the most recent numbers, special needs. We have the highest concentration of students with autism in North Carolina when you look by percentage of our total population. I did want to point out how many people, how much turnover there is. It's not a huge number, but it adds up over time. Look how many new teachers that we have hired just over the last four years. Uh, 
back four years. Mr. Logan had been here a year or two when this statistic began. And of course, lateral entry teachers, a lateral entry teacher is someone who comes in from another profession and has a few years to get their teaching degree. And one of our greatest examples of that is Joe Lilly, Chef Joe Lilly at the high school who did an amazing job and unfortunately has left us to go back to the private sector. Next slide. Now quickly, I'm just going to run through. It's going to be almost like a snapshot. Some of the recognitions and accomplishments that we have uh, picked up over the years that Mr. Logan led Asheville City Schools. The first is the fact that we're a Comer district. We were featured in this national mag magazine, Phi Delta Kappa, which is a, a really premier magazine, and we were featured for some of our dramatic changes in the achievement gap. Next slide shows the fact that two of our elementary schools were named national blue ribbon schools a couple of years ago. And what's significant about this, there were seven schools in North Carolina that got this honor. We had two of those, if that tells you something. Next slide shows the fact that we have a new school within a school at Asheville High School, and that is SILSA, School of Inquiry and Life Sciences. You can see the enrollment is growing by about 50 students every year. We're building that school, and they are doing an amazing job. And I don't have time to tell you what it's all about, but it's sort of a different way of delivering education based around project-based learning. And we're pleased with the results to date, and it'll be expanding this fall. We did on our Asheville High School Innovation Task Force. They met for a year, 100 and plus people from the community, and came up with the five recommendations that you see there on the right. The board adopted those a year or so ago, and we're pleased to announce that they're all underway now, and we're seeing promising results. As you'll see in the next slide, for example, FX, our freshmen are now housed up in the third floor. They're a little apart from the main school. It's all about better relationships among the teachers, teachers and students, and with the families of these freshmen. And the neat thing is, uh, and Keith would, could stand up here and give you a whole presentation about this, the negative things, the things we don't like, like dropouts, absences, and discipline incidents have dropped during this past school year and the academic performance has risen. So FX is working. Next slide shows the fact that AVID is also working. That stands for Advancement via Individual Determination. We have a program at the middle school, which is a national demonstration site, by the way. We have AVID at the high school. And you see the numbers, how much growth there has been from about 45 students back when Mr. Logan arrived here in Asheville to a total now of 265 or so. And what I'm pleased to announce to you, and you may have seen it in the paper, all 31 of the AVID graduates, these seniors, just a couple of months ago, were accepted at college and planned to go on to college. And these are kids who came from families who traditionally did not go to college. So AVID is working and we're expanding that as quickly as we can. The next accomplishment is the fact that we're into the nutrition and health business. We have a committee that serves both Asheville City and Buncombe County Schools. And our SHAC committee, as we call it, came up with these recommendations. You've probably seen in the paper, we collected BMI data. That's your body mass index. You probably know that. On every student in Buncombe County, Asheville City, we're taking a look at that. Vending machines, you're not going to find Cokes anymore in our schools where you, kids can go get a Coke or whatever. You'll find fruit juice and good things like that. We don't... We at least stress not bringing in the cupcakes and candies as often as used to happen. And then the last two are, or I hope you read those. Again, facilities, you may know that we have uh, the finest football field in the state of North Carolina. I probably should have not listed that one first. But Claxton Elementary, which I know you, you know it's over on Merriman Avenue, we've put about 8 or $10 million into Claxton to renovate that. We have a new cafeteria in this bottom left-hand quarter picture. Uh, at Asheville High School. It's an amazing place. If you haven't been there yet, please come visit it. And we re remade the fifth grade classes over at Dixon Elementary. Next slide. Finally, we have an excellent preschool. I mentioned that. It's a five-star preschool, and our daycare program at the high school earned four stars this past year. Vance is a NASA Explorer school. They got a grant, and they're in a three-year program, and that's really a nifty program. A $700,000 impacting leadership where we're integrating. Our principals are learning how to lead their staff to integrate curriculum and technology. 323000 to help us with our literacy programs in science. That's a partnership with Western Carolina. 
a future ready grant from the three powerhouses in the technology business. There were three schools selected in America. Paul Fletcher was one of those, and they got a $250,000 grant for equipment. And then finally, we're part of Homeland Security and a consortium of several school districts, and we've gotten a lot of money to make our schools safer. Technology, well, that was, I think, one of your strongest contributions. We have phones on every teacher's in every room. We've got new computers. We're fiber-wired. Again, it would be a whole presentation to tell you about how our technology has gone from here to here over the last few years. Dr. Ladico now is going to take over and talk briefly about our strategic plan, where we've been these five years, and where we hope to go in the future. Thanks, Charlie. It is an honor to be here today to uh, help pay tribute to Mr. Logan and all his contributions for the last five and a half years. Uh, <clears throat> one thing before I get into a lot of the detail here, one thing you need to know is that a lot of these accomplishments don't happen without a strategy, without planning, and without data collection. And what you'll see in the, the massive detail that you're going that is going to be uh, presented to you very quickly is that we really do look at ourselves very critically. Not all the data is flattering. If it were all, if we were perfect, we wouldn't be getting applying for all this support and getting it. But uh, uh, we've been very intentional in looking at ourselves and our practices. Uh, and every school system in the state of North Carolina has to develop a strategic plan that's aligned with State Board of Education goals, and then each school develops a school improvement plan that is aligned with the district plan. So we're going to just talk to you about some highlights of the, the five years that Mr. Logan has been with us, how our strategic plan has, uh, some of the results from it. The goal one has to do with student achievement. and. Uh, in 2002, our goal was to increase student achievement. We now are working on a new strategic plan, and we have new jargon that we're working, uh, working under. To uh, Asheville City Schools will produce globally competitive students, but it amounts to a very similar thing. Our career technical program or vocational program at Asheville Middle School and Asheville High School has made dramatic increases in the last several years. It's gone from being one of the bottom 15 ranked programs to one of the top 16. So thank you, Mr. Logan, for all the support you've given to that program. Um, our achievement gap, that is a perennial challenge, and one of our, it, it continues to be a challenge, but you can, you can see from this graph how the, the achievement gap is narrowing. And goal two, safe, orderly, caring, and clean schools was our 2002 goal. Incidents of violence, uh, this is a, a report that goes to the state. This is a pretty dramatic decrease, as you can see. School nutrition guidelines, this is a real emphasis for our stakeholders. We have a lot of parental input and community input on healthy schools, and we have some very specific um, guidelines that we're working toward, working on. Our third goal has to do with Dr. McGratton's uh, area human resources, to recruit, develop, and retain quality teachers. And uh, our fourth goal, to maximize family, community, and business support. And we certainly invite all of you in the room to join with us, if you're not involved already, to, to help our students. Finally, our fifth strategic goal, to operate efficiently and effectively. You'll see some of the uh, accomplishments of the Logan regime. <coughs> We, again, have some strategic goals, including development of a strategic plan that you're getting a little overview of, uh, some results, some f funds saved through energy conservation. Next one. Paperless board meetings. It used to be our board our, every board meeting, our, our, our board members would get a notebook. Now it's all online. Uh, they, they go to their laptops. E-procurement. Uh, <coughs> and our maintenance program has really uh, become far more efficient. So that's just a very, very quick and way too shallow overview of the accomplishments of Mr. Logan's regime. Let me just say, Mr. Logan, I want to thank you personally for all the support you've given me and how you've empowered all of us in Asheville City Schools to be honest and open and uh, 
really work hard to support children. We will miss you, but we wish you the best. With that, we have entered the part of the program where uh, we're going to begin to have a few awards. And John Dankel, who's one of our Asheville Civitan Club board members, uh, is going to uh, present a uh, presentation from the North Carolina State House of Representatives. I was glad when Keith asked me to participate in this because during my tenure with the Asheville Police Department, I spent a little time working with the city schools on some of their safety and security planning, and I can tell you they take that very seriously which is an excellent thing as far as I'm concerned. I have here a certificate from the North Carolina House of Representatives that I would like to read and share with you. It is a certificate of acknowledgement and appreciation. Whereas Robert L. Logan, with over 30 years of education experience, served as superintendent at the Asheville City Schools between 2002 and 2007. Whereas Asheville City Schools showed significant academic gains under his leadership, which has been re reflected in numerous awards and accomplishments. Whereas with this acknowledgement and appreciation certificate, we recognize and commend your exceptional leadership with the Asheville City Schools. Now, therefore, this 24th day of July, in the year 2007, we extend a sincere appreciation to Robert L. Logan and it is signed by Susan Fisher, Bruce Goforth, and Charles Thomas. Uh, thank you, John. And now we have another presentation. Uh, the Asheville City Schools Foundation is one of those important ways that our community does reach up and enhance and enrich the education of our young people through private initiative. Uh, Lisa Gay Hall is the executive director of the Asheville City Schools Foundation, and she has a very special presentation that I think uh, might mean a, a lot on a personal basis uh, to Mr. Logan. So. I'm really honored to be able to be here today and make this presentation to Robert Logan. Um, Robert Logan is a true leader and a true advocate for children. Public education is one of those places where we all come together as a society. And Mr. Logan has been the um, gatekeeper for that. It's very hard to be collaborative and still encourage the involvement of the many people who want to access the children in the, in the public schools. There are so many organizations that want to get into the public schools, kids voting, junior achievement, all, all kinds of programs that want to do good. And it's very difficult for someone to um, kind of be the gatekeeper for that. The Asheville City Schools Foundation has for the past 19 years existed as a nonprofit to um, support Asheville City Schools and yet we are a bit of an outsider ourselves. We raise money for the school system and then we give it back to the teachers and the students who are going on to college. Um, I cannot say enough good things about how supportive Mr. Logan has been of the foundation and of the many other organizations that want to be supportive of our kids in public schools. He is a, um, a true friend and always acts from the heart and does the right thing. And we are really, really going to miss him. And so we all got together one day and got a panoramic photo made of the administrators. And I would like to present this to him now. And I hope that he'll hang it on his wall at DPI. As I say, that this foundation is one of the many ways this community comes together in support of our young people, and uh, we uh, ourselves as Asheville Civitans are proud to uh, help set an example of that. Uh, we come to the part of the program where our club, in recognition of Mr. Uh, Logan, we have, a, we have a plaque for him, and I'll read that in a second, but I want to say one thing, and that is uh, for any leader, uh, the words of uh, the ship captain who says, one can never choose the wind or the weather.
can't control the wind or the weather, but you can choose how you set your sails. And I think that is the mark of a true and effective leader and someone who always keeps the eyes on what we're all about in education, which is the children. And the future that they will be able to chart for themselves is very much dependent on what we do now for them at whatever age they are coming through the system. And I think for the last five years, particularly as a father of two children who've been in the school system for 10 years, uh, it is a great gift to have people leading your system that your children are, their health and safety and well-being is dependent on and their future prospects. It is very important to have people that you trust, that you respect, and in, in the case of our small system, that I have the honor of calling my friend. So with that, I want to read this plaque, which says, The Asheville Civitan Club honors Robert L. Logan for his dedication to and leadership of the Asheville City School System, 2001 to 2007, an interval of significant educational achievement and enhanced competitive status of the district among the 115 districts statewide. Kudos to this teacher's superintendent, July 24, 2007. appreciate your being here because Robert uh, is not only in the middle of starting a new job as associate superintendent of the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction in Raleigh, he's also both selling a house in Asheville, buying a house in the Triangle, and relocating his family. So uh, the fact that he can be here today and fit us in is, is an honor to all of us. So, But we want to give Robert a chance to say a few words uh, and uh, that might be uh, a lot to ask that Robert say only a few words, but uh, <laughs> let me say that the, it takes many, many words to lead a system like ours, and Robert, is, Robert knows how to choose his words when the time really matters. So, Robert, please come up and say a few words. Keith, thank you so much. And to the members of the Civitan Club, I want to give my heartfelt appreciation for this recognition that you bestowed upon me this afternoon. Um, as Keith mentioned, not only have I started a new job, I've been there for the month of July in Raleigh at DPI, buying and selling a home, and that's a chore and ordeal in and of itself. But uh, my wife was admitted to the hospital last Friday and had to have her gallbladder removed. So we, we just, if there's anything else could happen, I guess... Uh, a storm could blow a tree over on the house. I guess that could still happen. But we, we really had a, a wonderful, wonderful time of it this July. So keep us in your thoughts and in your prayers. Um, any organization is no stronger than its weakest link. Even though you've bestowed many kind comments and recognition upon me this afternoon, the strength of the Asheville City Schools, I've said it many, many times, and I'll continue to share it with people and continue to announce this in my new role the strength of any organization is its people, the people, the teachers, the teacher assistants, the administrators, the central office administrators. That's the strength of our school system. Individuals who come together, accept the challenge, work hard to get the job done. People like some in this room, like Charlie Glazer, like Mike Ladico, like my, my, excuse me, my former <laughs> administrative assistant, Miss Lindia Childs like a Bob McGratton, uh, the, the many people, a, a Judd Porter, our former high school principal, and, and your interim superintendent now, Alan Johnson. I was so blessed to work with the finest group of principals that I've ever worked with here, uh, some of the finest in the state in Asheville. And the achievements that you see are indicative and representative of the hard work, the intellect, the intelligence, and the dedication that these individuals put into educating our young folks. And, and because of them, our school system has done very, very well, and our young people are receiving one of the finest educations that they can in our state. It's due to all of this, the successes of our school system that sent the uh, Department of Public Instruction after me. Uh, they started pursuing me to come up and work with them probably back in March, and I repeatedly declined the opportunity time after time. And as the spring wore on and we got into summer, I finally agreed that I would go up and spend some time and work with them. The way the department is structured, there is a 
11 member state board of education who was appointed, most of them are appointed by the governor. Uh, the lieutenant governor and state treasurer serve as ex officio members to the state board. There's a chairman, Howard Lee is the chair of the state board. A state superintendent, June Atkinson, who is elected by the people. She runs as a cabinet member uh, to the governor. Um, a deputy state superintendent, that's J.B. Buxton, who was hired by the state board. And then there are three associate superintendents, Philip Price, who takes care of the money, uh, Peter Asmar, who looks after the technology, and I've been brought in to handle innovation and transformation. Now, that's, that's a new role which is going to collapse all of these innovative, creative programs that are going on in the state with the CNI department in the state. So it's a, a large division and a lot going on. In fact, the remaining portion of this week, I will be at various meetings, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, around the state, uh, speaking on a new delivery system for services to schools and LEAs that the department has been developing over the course of the last 14 to 16 weeks. But again, I want to thank all of the, um, all of the individual presenters who uh, recognized me. John, it was a pleasure working with you when you were with APD and helping us with our security in the school system. Thank you so much for the certificate. Lisa Gay, uh, I will proudly display that picture of all of the administrators on my wall at the department and give them something to, uh, to envy as they come by and talk with me. Uh, Keith was one of the first people that I met when I came to the community. He embraced me immediately, uh, said, whatever I can do to help, please let me know. And he has been an advocate and a supporter of Asheville City Schools since I've been here and has done a fine job in helping us. So, so thank you. Uh, to all of you, uh, to keep a school system strong, it takes support. It takes the entire community behind the administration, behind the teachers, behind the children, helping to support them and push them and move them forward so that they can uh, grow and achieve. As you're aware, we are in a global economy. The 21st century is unlike anything that our young people has experienced, have experienced in the past. And in the global economy, they must be better prepared. Therefore, it's the responsibility of educators, of education, of our institution to get our young people ready for what they will face, not only in the world of work, but just the many societal problems that we baby boomers have created, and now we're leaving it up to, to this generation to try to solve. So your support is needed and your support is, is asked as we continue to educate our young people. And I would be remiss if I didn't make one final point, and this is it, and I'm concluding, Keith. That point being, if there are any architects in the room or anyone who knows anything about building, you're aware that you don't build anything of any strength and stability on a weak foundation. There has to be a solid base, good footings, for anything of any magnitude to be built upon. Uh, it was a pleasure following Dr. Alice Hart and Dr. Karen Campbell coming into Asheville. They started many, many of the initiatives that the school district continued and we built upon, helping to, to keep, as you see, the sustained achievement and improvement in our school district. So, Alice, I just want to say thank you for leaving the ground well tended. And uh, it's been a pleasure to continue on, and I'm sure that Mr. Johnson, Dr. Ladico, Mr. Glazner, uh, Dr. McGratton, whomever continues to follow us will we'll do the same because it is all about the children. Thank you so much, and have a great remaining summer.